right, everybody, welcome back to SIVO Season 6 LAN Finals. I'm misled. With me is Dust over here, and we are sitting at this analyst desk ready to get this thing going. We've already seen a bunch of EU today. Well, one match, best of three, went to that third map. Very exciting to watch. It was a good warm-up here, getting ready to go into these LAN Finals, and we're coming up right now with that Elevate CLG matchup, which is going to be so extremely exciting. And I'm ready for that. The story between these two teams, it's going to be intense. I'm ready for it. Yeah, I mean, before all these roster changes took place with Elevate, this is one of the biggest rivalries we had in North American Counter-Strike. Just these teams have gone head-to-head -head so much between the, the Katowice qualification process, you know, playing in league play at Face It's in Sivo, and then, you know, even they met on the online portion of playoffs before this LAN, and they have just been exchanging back and forth, you know, trading, you know, maps against each other on, on maps like Dust2 and Nuke and things like that. So, uh, you know, just it's going to be great. We'll get into that more in just a second, but first off, we do have to pay homage to some of the people out there who are, who are providing support for us to be at those events. So first off, we do want to give a big shout out to our title sponsor, Zappo. Consider the most secure Bitcoin vault in the world. Uh, you know, great storage that is offline to keep your, you know, vault secure uh, and just, you know, great just networking access there. There's no fees, no limitations, just a great way to do things. And so definitely go check out sevo.com.zappo for your chance to sign up for this service. And the big reason why is because we are going to be giving away $20, $21,000 worth of Bitcoins to random users. So uh, if you spread your referral code, you get more chances to, to open up vaults to try to tap into that $21,000 worth of Bitcoin. Coins. So definitely just go check out sevo.com.zappo to learn more about the Zappo service and enter yourself in for a chance to win uh, some of that prize money that we have out there, some of that giveaway money. Yeah, it's exciting stuff there. But to get back into these matches now, of course, starting this off, match number one, upper bracket today, we're going to see two matches. They're going to be best of three series. So we're going to have that Elevate versus CLG coming up right now. And historically, as we talked about, these two teams have gone against each other a few times. But we do have a little bit of a uh, little bit of change up coming from the elevate side of things with those two standards. I mean, we already talked to one of them earlier with Puckett, and that was going to be Hiko. And then, of course, he brought up Skadoodle. So two of those players coming in, albeit very, very strong players coming in to help this team out. But in my mind, at least, it kind of bodes a little bit better, in my opinion, for CLG, just because that dynamic is there with those players have been together for such a long time. Yeah, there's no doubt that the situation is really going to boil down to a team that is, is, is stable, that has been together for a long time, that has plenty of time to prep, prepare for events, that have been to several lands together. They've battled through quite a lot, some things successful, some things not quite so. And they're going up against a team like Elevate, who was pretty stable up until some unfortunate circumstances where they had Storm having to work and, and XP3 having you know visa issues apparently and having to bring in stand-ins. But they do have a lot of firepower and on the correct map selection where they don't have to worry about complex sets of strategies, maps like D2, things like that, where you can kind of pug and get away with it from the T side. Uh, I was actually watching them play some cash scrims against Luminosity prior to the event, and they were winning like double-digit T side rounds yeah. with Hiko calling, even though they've had such limited time to repair. So I think the point is, is when you're such a good player and you have a lot of firepower and you and you, and you know how to communicate, you know, maybe the natural chemistry is not there for like those small number retakes or clutch situations, but for just standard play, I think it's going to be perfectly fine. I don't see Elevate being so handy cat fight as much as people might think. Yeah. And I mean, like we said, the two stand-ins, amazing. Hiko's going to come in and call right off the bat, and then replacing XP3 with that op is going to be Skadoodle coming in. So, I mean, extremely talented North American opper, and at the time when he was still on a team and rostered, he was considered to be, if not one of the best in the world, within the top three to four players in the world with an op in his hands. So let's see if he still has that magic coming into this today. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I actually was talking to Skadoodle for the event. A lot of people are talking about this op nerf and how it has been affecting some of these players. Not only that, but also also working against Skadoodle is just a bit of rust. I mean, he hasn't really been competing. I know the last time I think I saw him play was at ClutchCon, which was back in January. So it's been about three months since he's seriously competed, besides maybe a map here or there as a mercenary or so for some of the, some of the teams in online league play. So, you know, he's got to knock some rust off and also this op nerf. But he told me the op nerf hasn't affected him at all. He's adjusted already. He's been playing with it. You know, he's adapted to it. And that man's a gamer. I mean, he's going to figure out a way uh, to get past those small things. So, yeah, uh, I, I don't think this face things a lot. You could definitely even argue that Elevate actually is almost slightly better off skill-wise, fragging ability-wise, because of some of these unfortunate circumstances. Skadoodle being a more skilled opera than XP3. You know, Hiko being able to naturally fit into that, that lurker uh, type role or that sight anchor type role on CT side, that Storm. Uh, was for Elevate, you know, being more skilled and adept at that. So it's almost like a very natural replacement uh, as far as roles played and positions played. 
Yeah, definitely. And one of the big things with this going forward, I know they or Puckett had talked to Peter about it earlier. How is their strategy going to change going against an adjusted Elevate roster? Are they going to try and switch it up a little bit here? Are they going to play differently because they know it's Skadoodle instead of XP3? They know that it's going to be Hiko's play calling, and they know that. They've played against Hiko before, so they might know some of the strats that he's a little bit more used to calling. Maybe something he has a little bit more favoritism towards. Maybe they can adjust based on that, but Peter seems very confident and ready to go against whatever lineup Elevate will have. Yeah, I think what it's going to boil down to is this. What you're going to probably see from Elevate on T-Sides, you're going to see a lot of, you know, working picks, default-type strategies when they can. I am sure they're going to send off Skadoodle with the op in certain locations on certain maps to try to open up the map, get picks, and, and try to work off of that. You're probably not going to see a whole lot of heavy, complex, set smoke strategies. That's going to be a bit more difficult unless it just so happens that all of them know exactly what they want to throw and, and they can work on that. I, I assume they'll try to, to, to play play maps that are a little bit easier for them to pug or that they've at least had some prep on. So I know they've been prepping a bit on cash, so you might see them try to go in that direction. Dust2 is definitely a key map they'd probably like to play. Maps they'd probably like to avoid are some of the, the newer maps like Overpass or maps that can be very hard to pug like Nuke. Uh, those are some of the maps you'll probably see them try to avoid. But uh, like I said, I, I don't think this really handicaps them that much. I think they still have a lot of firepower. I, I'll go out and say it. I actually favor Elevate to win this event. So uh, just because of the firepower that they pack. Now, I think CLG, definitely depending on the veto process, still could do what they should, which is win this event since they are the most stable team here and, and probably the most experienced team here as a five. Uh, so you expect them to be able to do that. I think they, they could. It just depends a lot on maps. And also, it just depends on the story of inconsistency that CLG has, uh, which, I mean, maybe you can comment about that a little bit, but you can definitely kind of see that play out in some of the events they've been at recently. Yeah, I mean, they did so very well at some events, and then they step into that major role. I know that we talked about it earlier, and it kind of fell apart. And as we talked about, a little bit of criticism for the communication side of things, but this is a team that you can definitely tell has grown as a team, as a unit. They talk to each other so much better now. Not that they were negative before, it's just the communication lines have opened up so much and they communicate so well that I think the improvements will really start to show today if they're going to come out at all and uh, what better time than to do it now, especially working towards more events coming up in the future. And I mean, you're going against a team that is, is rostering some very, very talented players on that Elevate team and they're trying to keep things going for themselves because they've made it this far, they've made it into the finals and of course it's got to be a little bit heartbreaking losing Storm and XP3 for the event because they've been right. long-time players there. Yeah, I mean, I think it's just CLG stuffers from inconsistency. They'll even admit that. Talking to Hayes, he's admitted to that in interviews that he's done. They're kind of a 50-50 team sometimes. Even on their strongest maps, like Nuke or Dust2 or Cash, they they sometimes drop it, those maps when they shouldn't. So, obviously, Dust2 is a great story. I mean, they they beat NVS at it on Aspen to shock the world. It was like the best team on D2 they were able to beat there at Aspen. This is after a lot of hype they had built from online play, and, and people were wanting they could bring it to land. They did, and that, that initial map of, of the land, but then they, they drop a map to their one of their best maps, cash to liquid in such a lopsided fashion. It's like you did the hard part. How come you couldn't capitalize and get out of groups there? So just a little inconsistency there. Then of course you see them, you know, able to beat Titan on Dust 2 to qualify for Katowice, but then once they get to the main event, they, they just get blasted by Keed Stars on that map. Uh, you know, you look at maps like Nuke, where they've been able to get crazy comeback wins against Hellraisers like at Katowice or, or dominate some of their North American competition like, like C9 or Elevate on the map. But then most recently, they've been losing some of their online tournament play on that map. Uh, you know, and I've already mentioned Cash with the whole Liquid fiasco at Aspen. So it just seems like they, they have the capability but in a lot of these situations where they are successful, it takes one of their players to just go off. So obviously, Peter was huge at Aspen for them in that, that envious win. Tarek was phenomenal for them on that comeback against Hellraisers in recent land play. And, and those two players in particular I just named are the heavier fraggers on that team, are the guys that have that reputation to, to be kind of the carry players on that team. Yet there are times where we see them fall short. So what, what Tarek are we going to get? The guy that has the sick aim reputation, or is it going to be the guy who struggles? Yeah, it's going to be curious to see. And actually pulling up a stat real quick, looking at a head-to-head -head matchup between Tark and Roka, this is just based off Season 6 stats here. I mean, if you take a look at their efficacy between the two, Tark has been the stronger player through Season 6. Now, that's not including any of the lands that they might have went to, any of the majors or any of that. That's just Sebo Season 6 stats there. And, I mean, the efficacy difference isn't much. It's a little bit. The over-under, quite a bit better for Tark. Uh, 155 versus 49. And, I mean, the, the, the kill-death kill ratio, one. 
1.7 to 1. And then the average damage per round, in my opinion, is a huge stat to look at here. And Tark is up 106 compared to 82. So, I mean, the average damage per round that we're going to get out of a player like Tark is a little bit larger here. But Roka is that guy on the other team, in my opinion, that can really blow up here and really turn the tide, especially if you get everybody else on the team going well. You get the op working from Skidoodle, and then you get Roka coming in there with a rifle. And that's something that's going to be very challenging and hard to beat if you're CLG. I'll tell you another name that people need to look out for in this uh, this side from Elevate. Obviously, everyone knows Hiko, everyone knows Skadoodle, and you've talked about Roka, so I think it's only fair we talk about Desi. This guy is a phenomenal fragger, very aggressive, entry fragger, dedicates himself to that role. He, he's filled in for teams here or there online. He, he was at Clutch Con with uh, that the torqued pug that was there, and he's, he's always just played and put up excellent stats. So that's a guy to look out for. He's going to be taking those initial engagements in this matchup, and if he's on point, he's winning those duels, that can mean a lot for Elevate. But we are going to see CLG ban season, understandably so. Elevate destroy them on season to eliminate them from Clutch Con in the quarterfinals. It's also a map that CLG has notoriously always banned. In fact, uh, they have banned season four times throughout uh, you know, playoff play in best of threes. So uh, definitely a map that's very usual for them to ban. And I understand why they don't play it. And when they have, they've done quite poorly. Yeah, and as much as I want to see the op battle, I know what's going to happen between Peter and Skadoodle. It will happen. I love the op battles. Everyone knows I'm a gigantic fan of that. But we've seen Skadoodle on season many seasons before. I mean, going down to great matches in the past. I by power complexity, uh, three map with the triple overtime. Skadoodle was absolutely insane on that. And second band comes in right off the bat from Elevate. That's going to be Mirage. Makes perfect sense. That's a map that CLG loves to play. And it's also one of those maps that requires a bit more technical play from the T side. So I can understand that pick. A straight up pick from Cash by CLG. Understandable there too. Cash is one of their strongest maps. I know they lost Liquid at Aspen, but you have to understand that throughout this phase of time where CLG was finally established themselves as one of the top teams in NA, Cash is one of the maps that allowed them to make that status, you know, beating teams like the former I by Power and Torque in the Aspen qualification process. They've also won some recent matches uh, on Cash, you know, against C9 and leagues like Face It. So it is a very powerful map for them. And we were seeing the Dust 2 pick from Elevate. That's classic. Yeah. I mean, you can explain why there. I mean, uh, that's just the perfect, perfect pick. It's a perfect hug map right there. That's, that's amazing for a team to go into this. Not much stretch. There's nothing secret on this map. There's nothing people don't know about. I mean, we might have seen a little bit of a different flashbang come from the EU teams today that uh, amazed me. The bounce, I've never seen that before. But I mean, there's nothing secret on this map anymore. Everyone knows it, and it really favors a pug-style team. I mean, let's go back to other teams that we might see, like an Area 51. When you get Mo on that map in mid, it's insane. And I expect the same thing to happen here with Skadoodle. With the op, the way that he can move, the way he can work in mid, it really favors a team like Elevate going into this. And then map number three, random choice, knife for sides will be overpass, which is a little bit rougher if you're Elevate, in my opinion. Uh, CLG Absolutely. has more experience on that map, right. so I would expect that to go to them. But map one and two, they're going to be a little bit closer, in my opinion. Yeah, I think this is the way it has to work. If Elevate wants to win this, they need a 2 -0. They need to win Cash and Dust, too. I think Overpass is going to be tough. I mean, in general, Overpass is a map that most North American teams don't have much experience on. But in general, we could also say CLG beat them in the online playoffs in Overpass. Very one-sided. So, yeah, uh, be on the lookout just real quick. I'm going to pass it to Casters here. But on Cash, just be on the lookout for CLG's dynamic CT side, the way they shift personnel so much on CT side. Uh, but on D2, Elevate's pick. Be on the lookout for Desi at that mid on T side, just being able to open up that mid portion of the map. And of course, like you said, Skadoodle's op. But without any further ado, we're going to pass it up to our two lovely casters. And it's going to be Launders and Helium, as they are going to bring you map number one here between Elevate and CounterLogic Gaming. Oh, thank you, my lovely analysts, Dust and Misled. Uh, I'm Helium with me, Launders here. We're going to. Uh, Cast this best of three here, CounterLogic Gaming versus Elevate, and it's going to be the thing to kick off the Season 6 LAN Finals. First map being Cash. CLG picked it. Launders, I know, I think you had a quick chat with Peter mm -hmm. uh, about the maps that they wanted to play. Did he, did he give you any more insight on Cash? Yeah, he, he, wanted to, uh, he wanted to play Cash, he wanted to be Mirage, and uh, that was because of this uh, dynamic of having a pug versus more of a team. And uh, I think that they wanted to avoid the more a mappy maps. Now the thing about uh, Cash is it might be a double-edged sword for them as it can be kind of a mappy yeah. at times, and that might bite them in the ass. But if they feel really good about it, I'm sure they have some tactics which uh, Cash is really friendly to, to open them up 
uh, to uh, really good plays, and I think a lot of potential on these rounds. So maybe cash is going to work out for them, and uh, if they wanted to pick it, I, I, I'm going to give it to them. I'm going to say they're going to take cash, and uh, when it comes to our second map, I'm not so sure. I think Dust2 is uh, just a great pick for Elevate. It's, uh, uh, as they said, you know, perfectly pug-friendly. So, uh, it, you know, I, I think Counter Lodge Gaming is, is a great D2 uh, team in spite of that. But even still, in terms of leaving a map up to question, you know, it's not going to be, I don't think you can call it a 2 0. Yeah. And actually, both teams throughout uh, the season six uh, or their time at SIVO have had really good success on Dust 2, which will be the second map. Uh, even though CLG does like to ban it, banning it five times, picking it twice, they're five and one on it. Uh, having, I guess, played it uh, quite a few times. So 83% win right there. And even Elevate, though, they're 6-3 and three on the map. So like 2-1 to one ratio there, they're, they're doing great. Dust2, like you said, great for Elevate. And maybe if this diverse side for, for CLG doesn't happen on cash, like you said, it can turn into an aim map. So it's the perfect two maps for Elevate. And now when we get to Overpass, if we get to Overpass, that changes it up a little bit. Mm -hmm. who, who would you favor a team there? Yeah, I think Overpass, uh, considering, I mean, I guess not how difficult the T-side can be because it can be difficult at times, but obviously it's gotten a lot easier. I think uh, it, it could mean that a, a team that has a better T-side is it should be favored to win the map. And I think that means that CLG should have at least a slight edge, uh, if an edge at all. Uh, though uh, the CT rounds can be crucial and uh, elevate if they can lock up a really solid half could take it but you know these maps I mean uh, they make it exciting because it's really hard to say that one one team has really uh, has really struck gold with uh, with these choices yeah and we, I mean starting with the season seven pro placements earlier like we already saw these maps uh, so we had some great op battles and we probably will have the great op battle that everyone wants to see between Peter and between Skadoodle 100%. so boost to Z like who do you think is going to be locking that down uh, the op duels, uh, I, I don't know. My boy Peter, I've been, I've been rooting for him since he was carrying crummy main teams uh, last year and just been playing way above his level. I think uh, uh, in terms of oping, he's just, I love to watch him play and he can be really creative. And uh, I, I want to say could have the upper hand in some of these engagements. Uh, maybe not, you know, has, has his fans, but Skadoodle, widely regarded as the best op in North America, might, have, might be the fan favorite in that regard. But um, I think that in this environment, Peter might, uh, might have the edge. So are we, are we bold enough as casters to put our own predictions on this first map? Oh, man, I was hoping you wouldn't ask. <laughs> it's always fun for the fans, right? So they can boo us when we're completely wrong. Mm -hmm. I'm going to say CLG take this map 16-12. Uh, and uh, I'm gonna say they I'm gonna say they take dust to 1614. Oh, they're taking dust two as well. All right, I would agree with you on this map, and I'll I'll go with a similar score line. Uh, but I think Elevate will take dust two, and it'll probably be close. So I actually go eh, I'll, I'll go 1613. Why not? Yeah. And then uh, then it's up to Overpass, which I don't wanna I don't wanna predict that one. Yeah. Now, yeah, Peter again mentioned like uh, in that in that very uh, confidence standing uh, pregame interview that uh, yeah they, they hit their shots but we've got the team tactics down uh, we've got the strats down we got this and uh, I really uh, I really believe that I think that they are ready so um, with that in mind I don't think any map is going to be uh, too difficult for them but also you know even in their big wins they like close games for sure um, CLG is a team that. Uh, have that comeback potential, but also also make a lot of risky moves that make you think maybe they could lose. So uh, with that in mind, we're in for a very exciting best of three here um, at the SIVO Land Finals. And I couldn't yeah. be more excited to be casting with you, Helium. Yeah, it's been great. It's actually funny. We met on LAN, uh, LAN ETS very yeah. briefly where I was still a Dota 2 caster and you were doing CS. And now yeah. look at us here, MLG Arena, uh, casting some great So I guess Cibo you moved action. up. Yeah, I, I don't know. Did I did I choose the right game? We'll see. Counter Strike pistol round starting right now on this first map. It's cash, and uh, well, the dynamic CT side of CLG. How dynamic 
Or will they get? Uh, I, I'm curious about their pistol rounds on both halves. I don't yeah, know. it looks like they're going to go for a similar strat that we saw in the pro placement match, where they actually have one stage up in Squeaky, except two are going to go over mid, and they're going to do it late as uh, two people exit out of the A main, and they're going to try to crush A here, and it looks like they're going to do a fast Peter. Being the lurker is going to try to shoot someone in the back after they pull off highway, but it looks like three players in the site are anticipating this play and falling off of A main already. I wonder what they're going to fall back into. I don't know. I think that's a wise play. We saw briefly Desi there very close with a 5-7 at forklift. That could have devastated a rush. I mean, well, look, I mean, Finesse is the only one with flashes. Two flashes and a smoke. Hayes, though, is still going to make this distraction over at the squeaky door. They've actually, uh, they're going to be coming up highway here. Bomb still in A main. So it's going to be a three-pronged attack onto A, like a 3-1-1, if you will. Rush here over by the fence, dodging some flashes. Let's see if he can land these shots. As, oh, it was by the forklift with the 5-7, only gets one, Rush with the nice one, can he get a 2k? No, Peter moving in with two headshots, three actually on the round, Skadoodle finally brings him down, and now here we are into a two-on-two two bomb going down here for CLG. And what can Elevate do to take this back? Trying to fight that fork player, get a name punched a little bit, Skadoodle trying to bring it in, and get some low, but does not find the kill, oh! and Cutler with the quick flick brings down Hiko, and they're pumped. The insane two frag from Cutler and the more insane three frag from Peter. Amazing from Peter on that round uh, with the three entry frags. And what they did on that round that kind of tripped me up even as a caster was they, they ran A main. I think they thought they were going to get telegraphed on that A push. So they decided to make noise A main and then fall off and then pull off the exact same strategy except focusing more on mid. when uh, and, and I think they were hoping to cause a rotate and elevate who didn't bite on the fake at, at all. So great play from elevate holding strong to their... To their uh, to their A-hold and stacking three in the site, but it wasn't enough. And now we have a buyout from uh, Elevate, who are going to be sporting the scout on Skadoodle and armor on the rest of them. Yeah, well, I mean, it was a big round. Like I said, Peter picked up three, Cutler with two. We'll see what happens this time. Uh, yeah, the CTs, we will have that force up. Skadoodle goes for the scout, so get in the scoped weapons warmed up early here. And uh, pistols with armor. And uh, there it is, the new personal favorite, Mac 10 So Hazed is rocking that. Skadoodle, I like this, trying to jump jump scout over this E-box. Anyone pushing up highway, if he finds anyone, it's most likely going to be hazed. Tarek is uh, positioned to get over towards B, but uh, no one's actually towards B at all for uh, for CLG. Yeah, taking it slow. This is a map you can really easily get ecoed on, and uh, obviously CLG are fully aware of this. Even a flash push that Peter isn't trying to anticipate right now, but it looks like eventually they're going to have to make a decision. With 35 seconds left on the round, players are moving over towards A, so they have that feeling. They're going to have to frag out at this point. Roka does get the first kill. The bomb goes down, but the, the kills are traded out. Yeah, and again, playing that fork with the 5-7, only able to get one. Uh, that time it was a Roka. We got to have a three-on-three, three, though. Cutler with the AK headshot bringing in. Now Skadoodle. Trying to bring people down with that scalp with Tarek and Cutler to open up the site completely. And now it's just going to be Desi. One more kill with the 5-7. It's a one on two. Uh, Tarek is going to gun him down. And now it's two on yeah. the board for CLG. Yeah, well played by Elevate. They, for they forced him into that late round, which is exactly what they wanted to do. And then once they went to execute, I think Elevate had the sneaking suspicion that maybe it was going to be A and started cheating players over to A. It was the right call, but they weren't able to capitalize on it and CLG were able to frag out in the site. So good, good round from them surviving that eco. Yeah, when it came down to the execution, it was pretty similar to their pistol round, right? This time they had one squeaky, three A main, one highway, whereas before it was one, one, and three highway. Mm -hmm. uh, but still, poised towards A. Hiko with some, some nice jumps, even scouts up the sunroom a little bit. Uh, but it is that full eco here for Team Elevate. Finesse rocking the Tech 9. And they are spread out everywhere, taking it slow. This time they do actually have a player. Up in that B warehouse, this will be hazed with the Galil, looking for some information. Once again, Elevate, pushing them into the later round, but this time FNS has map control and he's pushed up all the way, spots two players in the site. They know at least two are A, they don't know how many more though. And so Hayes is over here looking for information at B, Color takes down one, Hayes takes a spot of damage, and they're going to crush these players in the site, but it looks like they're going to move over to A, so they made their presence known. Yeah, so this is all fake over here, just trying to fight those kills. Put him in the arena that is B-Site. Finesse moving towards. He came through the vents to get to B-Site. Hiko finally brings him down. Hayes rotated back to make a distraction at middle. And even though A-Site's been clear, really, really clearing it, not wanting to get caught, caught off guard by a potential lazy play, uh, Bomb now goes down. And that'll just be Hiko and Rush. Hiko did pick up that Tech-9. That's going to allow him to find Hazed. And we have a two-on-three situation right now. Make that one as Hiko's the last man standing. Tarek, though, 
gets both there to close it out. And now round three for CLG. Yeah, so they have uh, done the trial by four, they fire, they've survived the pistol round and uh, and and the two ecos to follow. Now they're going to go up against rifles here, but Skadoodle's not going to have that option for an op, which can be very favorable on any round on CT side of cash. So with that in mind, this is a good opportunity for CLG to win a round, force Elevate onto a save, and put five on the board right away. If Elevate managed to win this round, they're going to get an op out of it, and uh, that's going to be the a start to a good CT half that they want. So. Um, almost a force buy in a sense, but not, not. I wouldn't want to say it's that uncommon, obviously. And the op goes down from Peter. It's not in a place where they can grab it, but it's the man advantage now for Elevate. Yeah, nice aggressive play on the CT side. Elevate boosting over, take down Peter. Tarek, though, has got himself uh, in towards A a little bit. He is smoked off on the truck side, but uh, commanding the forklift. Maybe he'll ride off with it. Tarek gonna get that opener on to Rush. He'll quickly pick Highway. He gets another on Skadoodle. And Roka, though, from the side gets him in the back. Hayes to find Hiko elsewhere on the map. Must have been in B, because that's where he's rotating over from now. And all these rounds have been so close, always coming to the two on two. But this is the first rifle uh -oh. and the first uh -oh. real shot where Elevate can do something. Desi lurking around in middle. And that's Finesse that was carrying the bomb. So a lot of information for Elevate and looking poised to get that first round win, unless Hayes can do something crazy. But he'll have to go get that bomb. Not, not anticipating that push there at mid, which uh, is fairly common to do, especially when you're so low in numbers. And that's leaving Hayes in a 1v, or a 2v1, excuse me. He's going to get the kill here, but doesn't think there's one in vents. Yeah, the uh, Roka doubling up smart. the same spot there a little bit. And a 1 HP would have been a tough round, even, he, even if he had escaped that uh, situation there with the bomb. Yeah. If Roka came out to peak right away, he would have risked, you know, uh, going for that, going up against the spray transfer of Hayes. But just by not peaking and kind of baiting his teammate there, he was hoping that uh, they wouldn't expect two to be in vent. And it was a really good assumption. You wouldn't want to waste your time looking at a spot where you just killed someone when they could be any number of places elsewhere. So it was good on Roka to have that patience and to secure the round for his team. So uh, they didn't manage to get the op, though, which is one thing. And uh, don't have the best weapons. Yeah, Skadoodle does have that op. Two Famas, though, here. And it's uh, four AKs and an op. Peter, though, again, taking 90 damage already. And it was brought down in that last round where he was using the op. So we'll see if he can get that, that rhythm there. And an op show earlier in those online matches. But again, pushing them into the later portions of the round. Still looking for those picks. I don't know if Peter's going to be the one to give it to them, though, Map with control. 10 HP. Yeah, map control conceded, but we have a player over at A and B. Hayes gets the entry on A. That could cause a rotate, and the B split will be... Oh, A gets shut down, though, by Roka, so numbers towards B. Tarek pushing through the vents. A couple players in checker. It's Hiko in sight, and we'll see Desi here coming over with the Famas. He's up in heaven. And there's the bomb being scooped up now, coming through that B warehouse. Uh, Hiko loses out on the generator oh. fight. Tarek actually is going to get two now, as Desi was peeking out of heaven quick, but not quick enough. And it's a three on two. Counter Logic Gaming controlling the site, looking for their fourth round here. Roka and Rush to go on the retake with AK and Famas. And there's Peter getting his op kill in. Sign of things to come, perhaps, as Rush now at this point. Probably going to want to try to save this Famas. Maybe he can do a little bit of damage here. Yeah, he will get one. He finds Tarek. He's actually going to take that momentum off the kill and move in. He does know Peter is very, very low. He even hit up for four damage through those missile crates. Yeah, that was very it wasn't close. Enough. Uh, it would still be planted uh, for Checker, but they had the risk of, uh, of losing the op and also just taking too much economic damage. CLG were able to take that round off the back of Tarek's insane entries. Like, uh, had a little bit of trouble killing Hiko on the site, but I haven't seen Hiko not get a kill in B uh, since ever. So it was uh, pretty good on him for winning that duel, turning around with good awareness and shooting that headshot on, on upper. Uh, fantastic play from him. He's been getting those entries. I'm, uh, I'm starting to worry about Tarek right now. Yeah, he has been doing really, really well. We'll see if Hiko can maybe try to shut it down, get one or two here with this 5-7. Uh, He's got no armor, but he does have a pop flash and playing behind those uh, boxes in sight can uh, give you a pretty good opportunity, but fortunately gets a little overzealous. We'll flash himself. And we're still watching him. Maybe this is where all the action is going to be. There's four terrorists trying to take him to this B site. Hiko still playing it by himself. He is the lone ranger, and there's Tarek once more with the entry. Cutler quickly after finds Desi. Skadoodle praying, shooting those bullets with this USB <laughs> through the smoke, trying everyone. to get somebody. I mean, they are pretty low on CLG, so maybe that, that call came out that he could try to get one through the smoke, even with a gun like that. 
I think this was a solid call from FNS to hit B here. Um, after they put so much pressure on A, I think it was almost natural that you would think a team who uh, who could full execute might end up at A. It'd be a, a good call. Now, Hiko playing by himself at B tried to scare them away from that site, but uh, with him moving around from all the different site boxes, I think that they assumed he was there by himself and were safe about going into B. But more than that, they don't turn around and run to the other site because they see a stack. Instead, they say, okay, we have the guns. If we execute properly, we'll win anyways, right? Five, five pistols are, are not equal to three rifles. And, and uh, even if they stack B on a rifle round, we'd be able to take it um, versus a stack. So they ended up taking that round with confidence. And, you know, you can really get lost. If you don't have a person on the other side of the site, right, or the other side of the map, and you feel like you're running into a stack, to run back to the other side of the map, that can, that can get you killed because people could have pushed through mid, people could be waiting in all these different lurk positions, and that's not something you want to subject yourself to. Instead, um, you want to shoot people in the front who are going to shoot back at you, but only with pistols. All right, and it looks like we've got Peter moving out. No, is he on top of the boost, it looks like? Uh, I think he is. We've got one player push up in A main. Oh, no, he is in A main as well. So just Derek's under the take boost. The and they're going for the execute onto A here. That pop flash came out. Skadoodle playing at the fork is not enough. Roko with the deagle is not finding the one digs that he was really hoping for. And, and just like that, I mean, this was a, well, this was a double save, right, for Team Elevate? Mm -hmm. They got, yeah, they got pretty screwed. Having uh, that one round, that first rifle round, and then losing one more. And uh, that's uh, that's going to mean CLG are going to have an early 6-1 to one lead here on Cash. And I don't know how much that's going to matter to Elevate, considering it wasn't their map pick. But at the same time, as we talked about, uh, Cash, you know, even if it's your favorite map, it's also an A map. It's, it's yeah. going to be hard to win against teams that just have really good aim or five players that can hit a lot of good shots. But again, we see that team play come through and uh, CLG taking early lead, looking very confident, looking very strong. And uh, everybody seems to be on point right now. Yeah, and I'm sure CL CLG could have seen those saves coming, especially the first one, maybe not expecting the double, but even still, they're playing very passive, taking the round down very, very late, and, and giving full respect to Team Elevate. And, you know, they're playing they're playing uh, tight Counter-Strike. Tight Counter-Strike, for sure. For sure. We'll see Roka try to get a little aggressive here. He's going to smoke off middle. He'll get himself uh, situated under Van Hayes, boosting over. Oh, they're very blind. Peter wow. might have been blind, too. Maybe even a no-scope there, close quarters. Peter taking down Roka. So Roka rush have already been dropped down. Uh, Skadoodle with that op, trying to watch the vents over towards Checker. Uh, he goes into a site. He'll get one. That's Hazed. Can he get another, though? Oh, peeking very, very nearly finds one. And I think that would have been Tarek. Maybe it was Peter opping that angle. Hard to tell just on the x-ray. But that's a four on three still with just over a minute left in this round, round eight. And CLG, I mean, they want to just get as many rounds as possible here. And they just want to avoid that op at A, but uh, little do they know, they're running into a second one, but oh, Cutler, Cutler somehow manages to lurk all the way into the site and gets Skadoodle before he can even take a shot. So now in a 3v2, Desi and Hiko are looking to get some kills, but I don't know how, how much of a chance they have to win this retake with Hiko so far away. Wow, he got him there. I think a dink even, maybe even two through the corner of the wall. Peter got down to one. He's that player in the B warehouse. Under the drop, we have one, and in the site, looks like Finesse. Oh, peeking out to challenge that Heaven oh. player. He'll get Higo down to 20, and I think at this point, Higo, last one up here in a one on two, gonna try to do some damage, but they'll peek him. Don't peek two together against oh. the op. And actually, Higo misses the shot anyways. And oh Cutler, goodness. nice lurk kill by Cutler, and the final one there to make sure Higo cannot preserve the op. Definitely the linchpin in that round. Have to highlight that kill, um, getting that one for free. And they're doing a great job of neutralizing these really strong players, right? Getting kills for free. That's exactly what you want to do, and they managed to do that. And as Peter mentioned, that team tactic play, it's not something you see in North American Counter-Strike that often. Uh, teams that practice these, like, two or three man uh, executions, these mini executions that happen, those are tactics. And as they came out mid, Peter came out through the smoke. Someone flashed behind him and did and come out mid with him. It was perfect because he blinded Roka close mid and they took mid control for it. So as long as they can do stuff like that, that's how they're going to make, the, they're going to separate a team of five from a team of three and two subs. Oh man, Hiko can't get that uh, close range five, seven kill. Cutler just moving on through, clearing out Squeaky. He found two. And well, this eco round, I mean, none of the eco rounds have gone very well. I think uh, one of them was maybe brought to a two on two, but I mean, it's just Skadoodle and Rush up now if they can find one kill. Boosted up on the side of the E-Box. Doesn't allow him to get, actually Rush picking up two here. So now in a one on three, <laughs> he'll have to do a lot of work here. Uh, he'll, he'll have oh. to ace if he wants to win this round. He gets distracted, trying to oh. pick up that rifle. <laughs> tap, tap, tap at the 5-7 is not enough to get Peter, who just gets him from behind that cover of Toxic. Now I'm never gonna put it out of, uh, 
out of question that Elevate can make a good half happen, but they're going to need a little bit of luck, and they're going to need to get their feet on the ground in one of these rounds where they just win it uh, without losing a player, because at any point now, if they win a round and then lose again, they are screwed for the rest of the half. They're going to be, they're going to have to save twice. Then the half is, is won by a huge margin from CLG, and it's going to be all too easy for them on the CT side to, uh, to win it. So uh, it, it all has to start here, though. This is going to be the last opportunity, I feel like, for Scoodoodle to get an op um, that he can buy for himself, you know, to use his own skin. There you go. <laughs> if you will. So it really matters. Get that stat track value up. If he has one. All right, Rush here at quad. I don't know if he's no knows that a T player got up to fence and is probably about to flank him. He'll stop the guy on top oh. of the bottom lane. Oh, and quickly flicking over to Cutler brings him down. So Rush and Roka, looks like it might be their round here over on A and flipping in it. Like you said, this is a very vital round for Elevate. Yeah. And it looks like they've just done it. If Peter, he's going to have to get an ace clutch 1v5 with the um, Peter's good. I don't know if he's that good. Oh, but let's see what he's happens. good. He starts off with that shot. Are you kidding? Somewhat through the smoke to that fence player. He brought out the Anders in me, that one. <laughs> Inhuman. All right, so four now for Team Elevate. Trying to get that second round. If they could turn this around and get out of it with an eight, seven and a half, you know how happy they would be? That, most, that would almost maybe be too much momentum to stop if they could turn this around. Yeah, you think uh, Team Elevate would be envious of oh. how happy they are. <laughs> <laughs> I'm done. Did you come up with that one? You alley-ooped it to me. All right. I'll, I'll take the assist, no problem. All right. All right, and Skadoodle, well, mini op battle there, but not a really too affair of a one as Skadoodle brings down Peter. And uh, that's, a, that's the round they want, but it's all about this round right here. Having a second round on CT side is all well and good. Going up against eight, it's not so great. And if they lose this round, it's a horrible disaster. So if they weren't planning to win two rounds, they should have never won that round in the first place. And uh, to uh, clean up this round, CLG know how important it is to win this round right here. And uh, they're going to go all out. Not that they are doing that for all of the rounds in total, but I think they want to work over towards B. I think this is the right call. B's a little bit, a little bit weaker. And for some reason, two people are just pushing a main. So they want that early information, but it looks like it's going to oh, be Hiko somewhat of a fast made. B anyway. Yeah, and it's going to be Higo again there by himself. Oh, one player has already rotated to heaven. So Higo trying to hold on to this site. Hasn't had much luck in the past. And that nade brings him down to 20. So the rotation's coming over. Hayes gets the entry rush. Gets hazed and Tarek to get rush. And that'll leave Roka now as the remaining first responder. Two players up in heaven. That's going to be mollied off. Bomb to be planted in the site. And there's Desi coming around on the flank. Gets one. Was trying to flash into the warehouse. And is brought down by Tarek. So that's two kills on this round for him. And it's a two on three if Team Elevate want to try to get these two rounds in a row. And Roka almost could have had two right there. But it's Cutler and Tarek to finish that round strong, and that's CLG now with nine. Yeah, right out the gate, that was important, that how that was called for CLG. I think Finesse say that we'll go B, we'll do it relatively quickly. That's our best odds to win the round because their, their B has been relatively weak. And then I think on Elevate side, they decided to push A main early for information. Once they found out it wasn't A, they could cheat over towards B, maybe smoke off the A main. But then because CLG worked quickly, it didn't even give enough time to act on that information. And so that was a perfect counter to what I think Elevate was thinking. All right, and now we will see just CLG spreading out, running the claw here on Cash. And honestly, like, a pretty firm grip already with just uh, this first T side underway. Of course, it's not over yet. Maybe Elevate String a few more. But if it's going to be this one, there's going to be have to gr some good individual play for Elevate because they do just have two pistols, 5.7 uh, and the Deagle there on Skadoodle, even mixed in with the FAMAS on Hiko. Roka going for that Penta run boost onto, onto Shroud, but um, was unable to do it. Fell off right in front of Squeaky. I wonder if uh, Cutler is going to have a surprise when he opens his door. Uh, a Roka surprise. <laughs> uh, Roka has been known to surprise people through that door. Yeah. Generally from the other surprise. side. Even as the... Oh, yeah. oh <laughs> man. I didn't even get a point of damage in there. Oh, my goodness. Oh, man. Cutler finds an easy one. And now he's going to move out, checking that fence. Quad has been mollied. No person to even get out of that position. Rush will find one. Immediately traded by Finesse. Peter hits the op shot onto Skadoodle. And now it's just going to be Desi and Higo. Higo picks up the FAMAS. Finally gets a frag in. And it's uh, three for CLG. One coming up highway. Two holding on to Quad. And it looks like they're... Yeah, they are going for that boost over Quad. Uh, Desi, I think, is maybe going to be the real problem that, that they will have to worry about. Hiko is just over on the truck. He might even be surprised by the highway player. Or, no, Hiko will surprise Ooh. them. And actually moving forward with the FAMAS, that's his weapon. It's up to now a 1v1. Hiko, oh. though, 
Wow. Can't get it. And Finesse closes the round out with a double kill. Three overall in CLG. That was, well, a really, that was probably the closest one yet on rifles, mm -hmm. but 10 rounds now in the books for them. Yeah, you never want to be in a 1v1 versus Hiko. Uh, I just, I can't think of a player that would want to, but uh, FNS played that really well, acting really quickly on information. He knew Hiko was going to make a decision. He decided, I, I think he's going to do this. I'm going to push him around, uh, push him around the site really quickly. And, and that's what one of them around, acting, uh, acting extremely quickly. So, well played by him in that 1v2. Yeah, now we get into the awkward last rounds of the first half when you're just a poor CT team. Uh, let's see, how many in a row now is that? That's only two that they've lost, so they're not even getting max bonus. Like, Team Elevate, it depends how much they want to force it up. Like, they might even have to double save and buy out, to buy out in the last round. It's brutal. The worst, the worst, it's just the worst rounds to win. You know, to win the rifle and then lose right after, and then yeah. to lose five, or lose five, win right after, and then lose. It's just a, as bad as it gets for them. And uh, yeah, they're lucky for them. They had one around uh, with a lot of money left, so they didn't have to force oh, right away. Go in. And uh, yeah, that was a spam box molly. No one is, seems to be standing there right now. But uh, going up against the eco one more time, we're gonna walk in a B, and the bomb is going towards A. So everyone's just biting on these fakes right now. It's perfect. Yeah. Every single person rotated over to that. It's going to be Rush, who is rushing back to the A site. He'll be the first one there. Uh, but again, that is just with the P250, no armor. So it's going to be tough. Trying to peek in, even somewhat flash. Just trying to go as fast as possible. He'll be gunned down by Tarek. Tarek, though, USP through the box to the head. That's Desi with that one. And then Peter with a close range up. Missed. Doesn't matter. Pulls out the pistol. He's good with that as well. Oh. And uh, buying enough time for his teammates to just get free open shots on that last player, which was Skadoodle. So three to survive and now 11 on the board for CLG. Yeah. I'm so glad to see CLG not work out, uh, spread out into the default, and try to whittle down a team that's going to be so good individually, but instead are causing them to move into the wrong positions, shooting them in the back. We saw many lurk frags happen uh, so often, and it's just working out so well for them. And they're really dominating right now, and they look sharp. And I, I can't tell if it's because Elevator are on their game, but it just seems like uh, CLG are doing a great job of outplaying them. Yeah, and it looks like, okay, didn't have to go for the double saves. Skadoodle will have his op, and now the M4s here, both silenced and unsilenced for Elevate. They would love to get out of this with four rounds in the first half, but from what I've seen so far, I don't know. Oh, and look at Desi, he is God. just munching on some nades. Let's just smoke him out, too. <laughs> I mean, that they don't the even dessert. know he's there, but they can't help but think. He can't. He couldn't help but think they know. And uh, oh, right. good oh, trade. Peter, nice one. That's going to clear out the vents. That is that key position for CTs on this map when they want to get a little bit more aggressive. Have that faster rotate to be. Oh, and here it comes. Skadoodle. He's got to hit a lot of shots here, oh. and he will. He'll bring down Peter. He'll get that one re-peaking from Quad. Oh, saw that Molly coming out of Squeaky, so now he's got to be ready to watch both of those angles. Maybe Rush can help him out here. I think that was maybe Rush's chance to peek. Isn't giving it to him. Playing as passive oh. as possible. And actually, you're not peaked very wide right there, so he is seen before he can see any of the enemies. And wow. Finesse moving up under the catwalk, able to bring down Hiko. And oh, the drop from Rush, and there it is. Elevate. Well, better late than never, I guess. Get that third round on the board. I suppose, yeah. I mean, uh, it's it's coming down to the last round, so it doesn't matter what happens. They just have to buy. And uh, they did manage to keep three players alive, so the rebuys are going to be solid. Everyone's going to have their nades. Everyone's going to have the weapons they want. Oh, except for Desi, who actually can only afford to uh, buy a Famas. That might be a little bit of a disadvantage here, but at this point, it's not really about uh, how big your guns are that are winning your rounds. I mean, we've seen uh, CLG just make them move around the map uh, just as they want to. And if they can keep up that kind of play, they can close out 12-3. Four rounds on the board for uh, Elevate on CT side is a total failure anyways. But... Uh, uh, it's much better than 12-3. Much, much better. Yeah, and Tarek and Cutler claim to play. Both of them with 17 kills already. as we're, and, and a potential for some more here to finish this last round. No one's even taken... Well, okay, Hayes took a little bit of damage. Actually, so did Tarek. Not a lot by any means. And Desi trying to get a little bit aggressive. Maybe just find some information here uh, with the FAMAS. I mean, to be honest, Tico wasn't getting a lot done in the round he had a FAMAS. He did really well. Got three or four kills. Almost won it. So maybe Desi will do the same, and he starts off killing Finesse. Close to the box, actually gets another player quite low. That was Hayes, down to 15 now. Oh. And Skadoodle's here, oh. seeing some shooting Peter right in the arm, and that's maybe a consequence of the, the slow peak now. I think he was shooting the player who's setting up the molly, and then Peter peeked out right beside him. Yeah. And it took a bullet for his family. But they're rotating back to A, and they're doing it quickly. They're doing it extremely quickly, and that's what's important. Because as soon as Rush hears that it's going to be A, the players are going to be late to rotate. But if he can't get a kill here, there's so much pressure on Rush right now to get a frag. And they're going to try to clear up the site, but they think it's empty. 
Yeah, and he'll get one from that quad position, trying to shoot down that Terrace who's in the default spot, and Hayes peeking on the left side. You can just see how difficult it is. Like, he doesn't have X-ray like we do, and they peek out real quick. Oh. Cutler to find another onto Skadoodle, and now it's just going to be Hiko trying to do this 1v2, oh. spam it through the smoke, control the spray nicely, but it's just a little off target when he started. And there it is, the half. Oh my 12 God. 3. See, I, I said Cutler, you know, was that rock. He gets 20 frags a game. Yeah. Well, this game he's got 20 frags and a half. So uh, he's already met his quota in my book. And uh, on, on the back of, of Tarek's entries, some great op shots, some great calls, and just great play overall. Uh, CLG are, are looking fantastic right now. Um, elevate on the back foot here. I think if they, if they had any chance to win this map, it would have been on the CT side. Coming into T side, if CLG managed to build this, that's a, that's a, that's a disaster. I can't. I, I don't even know how you would be able to explain that or justify a loss um, by uh, you know if if elevate a team that is losing because they're a pug is able to win on T side. How could that make sense? Yeah, I don't know. And that was that was such a great T side by CLG. They were taking it slow, and then when they got the picks or baited out their rotations of the CTs, they went really, really quick, and they took the sites, no problem. Always getting themselves the good trades, taking the sites generally with the man advantage, especially a B because Hiko was there alone. Yeah. But uh, I'm almost upset because if CLG run away with this, like that's four rounds. That's maybe just one rifle round. So we're not even going to get to see this dynamic. CT side cash that CLG was uh, was talking about. Was although, sporting, yes. Although Peter did say very confident on T side as well. Yeah, very confident on T side as well, and I mean it's just uh, it's just fantastic. I mean the rotates I think we could also highlight, which we don't always get the chance to, and and the calls are very apparent. Like they show up on uh, in CLG's game and how they play out the rounds. Uh, you know, on the stacks, most of the time they were voting the right site perfectly, and in other rounds they were causing rotates to the wrong site. So it was just uh, oh, here we go. Everything working. In the this favor is a proper a pistol, pistol strat. Around. This is what I wanted to see. They're pushing three towards B, aggressive, going for that flank. They can even stop the bomb, perhaps. Bomb is still way back there, almost in T spawn, and they had one A, one mid, three pushing B, oh. and they're coming back though. Rush is in the vents. I think they might might have heard it break, and they're actually going to be able to bring him down. So Peter finds a vent player. There's another one there. Can he get the reload of time? Oh. He does just in time. James, that clip in for the one tap, and that's Desi to fall. Peter with two on this round. Oh, Hayes. Not only an op master, but he's come up big in these both pistol rounds on cash. Takes down a very important pick on a player crossing, and it's a 5v3. I mean, it, or a 5v2, excuse me. If Roka and Hiko manage to win this, it's uh, it'd be an unreal round. But look how much armor there is. Four people went for armor on the CLG side. Hiko, gun blazing, runs out with that Glock. Almost got them both. But it's not enough. And here's that 10 second defuse from Finesse. And round 13 on the board now, 10, leading by 10, the CLG. <laughs> Big smile on the face of Tarek right now. Uh, everyone looking pretty happy. Peter getting very important picks on, uh, on Russian Vent, who I think was waiting for him. A uh, very scary player to see on a pistol round. Some, pe some people you, uh, you look at and die, and I think he's one of them. So uh, yeah, they, uh, they, they won a lot of their trades there. Um, and uh, what was really great on that round was they pushed 3B, which is a very common pistol strat. Like, on the first pistol, they pulled off a very common pistol strat, like go away main, split through highway. We saw that in a, in a matchup uh, on, on the other side of the world just now, right? And yeah. instead of just following through with pushing all the way through B, they went back to B because that would be the unorthodox adjustment. And it yeah. ended up working out. Rush was going to act on that information, came out of events, and got punished for it. So it was perfect. Yeah, it was nice. And then since they did push forward, they got the information. Oh, no one's in B warehouse. So if anything, if they will be at B, it's through vent, which yeah. they watched back and they got rush immediately. And then they knew it was A and they rotated over and everything was good. Everything was Gucci. It indeed was. Hiko, though, almost had a chance for a really big play that round. Like, if he got two with that Glock, I mean, even still, it would have been a three on two after he killed two. Mm -hmm. But I don't know. Pad the stats, at least. Stat padding. Yeah. At the highest level. Nice pop flash here from Hayes. He <laughs> doesn't have a gun out there to help his buddy, but he does stop the rest from rushing on in, and it's Hayes with a very powerful MP9, but it's not powerful enough. Peter moving in with the MP7, gets one, but is taken down by the Tech-9, and now it's just Tarek with the Colt. Finesse with the FAMAS. They are also very low players here, but Skadoodle now, long range. With that scout, will bring down Tarek. Finesse finds one with the nade, and one on two moving in, and there it is. That's the round upset.
Yeah, the first eco of the game here uh, goes to Elevate, who do it um, on the back of a lost pistol round. It could have been a critical round, not because when you win the pistol round, you're, you're given, you're handed two free rounds, but because that, that pistol round is just a round on the board. And that means with 13, they're three away from winning the game. And that's how you have to think about it. Yeah, if they won the pistol round, they get the two free rounds, and uh, they're, up to, they're up to 15. But even beyond that, Elevate have so much... Uh, have so much gunk to work back through that by the time all is said and done, CLG should be able to clean up three rounds. And uh, because it's not four, it's only going to make the road harder. Oh, Hiko shuts down that aggression of the CT players. And, all, and then is their Hiko round trying to get aggressive into A main. Hiko guns him down. Peter, though, playing close here at the fork. Actually, from all the players on CT side for both teams that have played the forklift, have not been greeted with too much success. Granted, though, it has been on those pistol rounds. And Peter not even able to get one there. Tarek from the fence. They were trying to set up a bit of a crossfire, bait him into the fork, but uh, not too much damage done. Yeah, that's solid from Elevate. Uh, right after Eco Wing CLG are uh, able to win around without dropping a single player. That's really good for their economy. They're starting to get a, to a good place and, and get back on their feet. I think a true test in this half is going to be rifle versus rifle, which we have not seen. And uh, because they were able to eco CLG, it looks like a double save for Elevate. So a huge win on that round. And uh, that's going to widen the, or, or ex excuse me, close the gap that was so wide to begin with. Yeah, I mean, they're on the, they're starting, right? From 10 rounds behind to eight. Well, let's see if they can keep up the progress. And, well, I mean, with a good chance here, it looks like some people buying armor just to, to even out the money. Uh, but it's it's pistols. It's a, it's a CZ, five sevens. And, like I said, three of those players with armor. And Skadoodle with the op. So we'll see if he can maybe just get some flashy plays in on this round. Just build up that momentum with some fancy uh, eco round kills. And there it is. He starts off bringing down Tarek. But a uh, fancy boost over here. Over that, uh, the bin, the A site. FNS about to take an engagement here versus a player who's looking to come into B. Pop Flash comes out. Does have that CZ close, too. Nobody's out just oh, yet. He doesn't know that he got over to Checker. He turns quick enough oh. and will actually get him forced to reload. But, well, Desi, his buddy left him. He was going in alone. I think they were already trying to rotate back towards A, and actually Roka will fall to Peter. Rush moves in with that silence, takes down Cutler. Three on one. Peter, the last man here. Probably just going to try to save that AK. I think that could have been a much more expensive round for Elevate. I think they came out of it pretty clean. Uh, you know, kept uh, three players alive. Peter is able to save an AK, so that's a big win for them. Um, it's going to help out their economy quite a bit. And uh, I wonder if he's going to be able to op after this round or if uh, his winnings are already calculated now that the bomb is almost certainly going to go off. Um, but... Uh, at the end of the day, elevate, look at the score. And if they don't look at the score, they probably have a better chance to, you know, if you don't look yeah, down, a certain point, you have a better chance to make it across the tightrope, I think. Exactly. Uh, and yeah, the money comes in now. So Peter is able to bankroll his team this round, saving that AK. He can easily drop one or, you know, drop that AK and op himself, which is, I'm, sh I'm sure, what he's more likely going to do. And yeah, yeah, we see it. Yeah, and so that's a little bit of a bank here. Hayes has got some extra money. Oh, he's going to buy. Okay. So without that, someone would have had to have a weak buy, right? A uh, a uh, a famas, and no one wants to be in that position. So it's good that he saved that, and that's how important a save can be. Now that Molly goes up on the boost, they're going to deny, deny any mid control. Here's the first rifle round of the game. It's going to be so crucial for either team to win this. I mean, they can really show if uh, they have what it takes to, to win the game. Now for Elevate, they have way more to prove on this. If, uh, if CLG win this round, right? Elevate's chances are pretty much shot. If Elevate win this and win it convincingly, then they might actually get a little bit nervous. You might actually think they have, oh, a chance to win this game, and Roka taking a lot of early damage to Cutler. If you actually continue that spray, Roka might have almost died there. Yeah, so very key round. And actually, since that eco, there's already been three in a row for Elevate. This could be four, and this could really kick off the comeback. But Roka did get pretty low. Generally, he's the one killing people through the door. Mm -hmm. But this time, he takes quite a bit of damage. And that'll be actually still... Uh, oh, there's a, they're both in quad. Was it only two at A? Wow. But no, there's three. Two in quad, one over towards uh, the highway side. Actually, up on the catwalk, we saw him there from Peter's perspective. Now, Hayes has to worry. He's watching mid. He doesn't have mid, yeah. Yeah, so Peter was having the double up on it. Oh, getting dinked. He doesn't even know from where. He had no clue, and honestly, neither did I. It was Desi up on the catwalk. Hayes, though, is there to get two. 
Oh, a dink comes out. Yeah, wow. A lot of damage onto Desi. Bomb going down here. Rush gets it. This is a winnable. Two on three. And that very important round for Elevate Desi. Oh, oh, no. Maybe he didn't hear the fire or heard it, but didn't realize it was right under him. So he'll melt. And Finesse gets that kill of the round. And they're pumped. And they'll get that defuse. I mean, that's a, that's a sign of victory right there. 14 rounds on the board. They won that retake very cleanly. It was a highly winnable, as you mentioned. I mean, a 2v3 retake, probably, I, I would say it's fairly even. Like, I'd say, um, you know, uh, barring the fact that you might have low money or on an eco, have uh, the opportunity to sit in spots that are hard to shoot and force people to cross you, which is exactly what you want. But CLG managed to win that without losing a player. And that's a 14th round on the board. They're so close to winning this map that they chose. And so that's the only thing that Elevate have going for them, that it's not the map that they chose. That's the one thing that they can hang on to even if they lose the map. But I think no matter what map they lose, if they lose really severely or they don't win convincingly, they're going to feel bad about it. He's walking into A main here with no flash. Okay, he's just going to jump up. Yeah, this is common though. Like a lot of times when that smoke goes out, Harris will just nade it, spam it, and do everything. But no one was there to even see it, so Hazed. I don't know. No one was there to see it, so now he doesn't really feel like staying there. Yeah, but Roka knows that he's in A main, so he's probably calling that. And they're going to try to deal with his aggression. Oh, Hayes smoked it. So he's making himself fully aware, or making the other team fully aware that, of where he is. And it's not going to be a problem for him. He's perfectly comfortable sitting in here, delaying for time, and knowing that they don't have to worry about a straight rush from A main. All right, we see Skadoodle going over the boost here. Will he drop, though, and with his teammates? Are they going to help him work out mid, or will they go back towards A? Desi is down there. Gonna help work mid. It looks like I think Rush was watching that flank. And Roka, this is where he always has fun at this squeaky door. Yep, and uh, cheating over towards A is our six man Cutler. Wow, Skadoodle. Oh, leaving mid open again has been a, a big issue for them. Elevate, playing that round out nice. There's Peter though to bring down Rush. Off it from Quad. Roka though moving out the squeaky quickly. Will bring him down. Desi gonna find one onto Cutler. Actually oh. gets Tarek as well, so finding them both. Shutting down that highway defense, and that is going to lead Finesse all by himself. That was insane from Desi. And he'll save, and I would expect, they know he's got that M4, so they're going to want to try to kill him. We saw one guy scrambled off, I believe it was Desi. Try to be, probably going to try to work down behind him. Or, you know, he'll, he'll go for the peak again, and Roka picking up the op. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was a really that was actually a solid round from Elevate. Like um, uh, they worked that really well, and going out mid at that time was a perfect opportunity. Um, on previous rounds, Hayes has left mid to worry about A and had been the only mid guy, and so he's been all the way up at Toxic Barrels, and we just have to watch his back in a very risky fashion. But on that round, Elevate went out mid at the perfect opportunity, even not knowing that on previous rounds, and uh, managed to take that heavy mid and, and turn it into a free A pick and and win the round because of it. So. Uh, good rotations called um, from Hiko, I suppose. Yeah, I mean, you got to wonder. I know we said before this land that they were going to be taking turns calling, but mm -hmm. I mean, that's more like who's going to call the strap, but who's going to actually lead you in, in the heat of battle to make the calls? Uh, would, would lean towards Hiko on that one. All right, let's see, though. Again, it's toward A. Elevate already around the site. Rush is able to get two. Tarek, CZ, almost running out of bullets. Does find Rush, but Hiko and Rokona opened it up. And now, look at this gap. It is closing. CLG mm -hmm. did get the 14, but that is not uh, where you're looking for that match point round. Elevate is here, still playing to win on map one. Yeah, CLG have done this a number of times, and I can't tell if it's because they love exciting games or if it's <laughs> because they get figured it out, but... Uh, regardless, they do like to ma get these matches get close. I think there is still quite a deficit for Elevate to come back from. They've got a lot to prove, uh, you know, in spite of their recent round victories. I mean, if we look at them, uh, at CLG, still have two rounds on the board, one of them being pistol, one of them being a rifle. So they have the capability to win, and they only have they only need two to do it. But so far, it's been a solid half from Elevate. They're definitely winning it. And if they can continue to outplay CLG, who I don't think will fall for the mid control uh, ploy anymore, then they might have a dog in this fight. Oh, Skadoodle opens up at B, finds Cutler. And he was playing it by himself. So Bomb now rotating back over, just coming through T-Spawn, trying to get its way over. Uh, looks like we do have a CT ready to go through vents pretty quickly here. Roka's still just trying to hold some people in A. I mean, keep that fence player at fence all game. Doesn't matter to him. And actually trying to push him down to get the kill. He'll bring down Finesse, and uh, there you go. He, he looks the right way. Peter gets him. Four on two now, though. Bomb, Bomb is still so slow getting its way to B, but it's not really going to matter this round. It should just be 
I would maybe even think of frag out here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, looking to make the round expensive is the goal for Hayes right now as he looks for this one dig. And will he find it? No. Desi, movement too good. Uh, avoids the crosshair of Hayes. Not too many one digs and uh, a lot of strong one diggers. Yeah, we haven't even seen in our last, you know, the, the Euro match for the pro placement tournament. Mm -hmm. And then even in this, we've seen a lot of deagles, but they haven't really put on the show that you always want to see. Yeah. So this is turning out to be a barn burner here as uh, Elevator about to take a ninth round, are within five of tying up, and uh, CLG, I think, are looking to take a pause, maybe talk about how they can secure this 15th round. I don't blame them. Um, they might just need a second perspective, maybe a little bit of clarity instead of trying to do it in the midst of all the action. And uh, uh, we'll look to work something out here. I think uh, it's definitely on, on Elevate to make something happen, obviously. It's on Elevate to prove themselves on this map um, and to respond to whatever they think CLG is thinking. Well, they've cut that lead in half. At one point, it was, uh, I think, what was it, 13 to 3? Yeah, 13 point? to that 3 half, the, yeah. That was the 10 deficit, and now it's shrunk to 5. Mm -hmm. as the scoreline is 14 to 9, and CLG, uh, well, they've got two rounds this half. They haven't strung anything together. It was just mm -hmm. two defuses. Uh, they won the first round, gave up three, Won that in round four, and then gave up three. So maybe Elevate, after this uh, pause yeah. and timeout, can get yeah, even more. Absolutely. And this is what I was talking about, right? Like, they won the pistol, and yeah, they got ecoed, but that pistol brought them so much closer to winning in a situation where they were going to lose six rounds later and actually be close to losing. I mean, they're not actually close to losing, and that might be, the, that might be a little bit misleading, but... Uh, if they hadn't won that pistol, let's say, and it was 10 to 13, think about that scoreline. That is brutal. Yeah, that would be insane. Yeah. And we, we made such a big deal. Cutler, first half, crazy. 20 mm -hmm. kills. Now, round 24, he's like a three more. Three kills, yeah. Yeah, so, I mean, maybe they just need to get more aggressive on their CT side because Cutler was just absolutely opening everything up for them. Right. Be a T-sided player if you... Uh if you had had success on the T side, and Hayes is going to get spammed a little bit at mid. They're going to want to try to take him out, and Skadoodle's going to open up that possibility. He's going to go with a boost and look for a pick, and he's oh, free! Yeah, two of them! Unbelievable spray. For a second, I thought he was going to get out of there with not a single kill, then like the last two I bullets know. connect to get some both. It's like if we were playing. You know, yeah, <laughs> let's seriously. not get into it. Oh, we'll get into it. <laughs> Maybe. Maybe on the analyst desk. All right, three. To two, elevate with three here. Desi already with a 2K. Pressure on Cutler to hold down this truck, but he, they're hoping it's B. They are truly hoping it's B, and they are letting them walk right into A. So um, on this gamble, which you have to do sometimes, CLG have made the wrong call. And uh, in this situation, uh, if the bomb gets planted at the other side, what you do is save. Um, with that being said, they, uh, they do want to go for it. I mean, if they... Like, with their money, I don't know if this is the right idea. Yeah, they're, they're just going to save uh, their two weapons. They have little chance to win the retake, and it's because they're so far from the site. Not time-wise, time that isn't really the problem for them, but, like, by the time that they get to the site, there's so many more places that Elevate could be because they took so long to get there that yeah. even though you have time to defuse the bomb, you don't have time to find everyone and kill them. Or even dying on the way over. Like, it's, yeah, it's exactly. a long rotate back if you're going through... Who knows uh, how they up, got up there, the right? Could have yeah. been mid. And exactly, exactly getting caught at Z, and it's definitely the right call. Like, he's still got this five-round buffer. Shrinking to four now. So we can shrink to but, four, no uh, doubt. It's better, to, I think, to play the long game when you're ahead and just try to build up that economy. And I guess, are they going to really force it up here? If they lose this one, they will be dirt poor. But mm -hmm. no, they'll just... Oh, no, if a mask comes out, op comes out, yeah, they're swapping all those guns around, so it's CLG forcing up here. Mm -hmm. So it's going to be on Elevate to try to neutralize this op as quickly as possible, or just as safely as possible, I guess is the better word for it. And uh, if they can do that, now Tarek, I think, is going to have a lot of pressure at mid, but has been so solid, he thinks it's the right guy to put here. Now, in the side of the smoke, he can get spammed. Like, they will come right out to the, the right side of the smoke and just peek out a little bit and spam him. Um, and that's what they did to Hayes. And the problem with putting two, two different players in the same spot is that you don't know what happened on the round previous. And so you might stand in a place that's actually really not a great place to stand. But um, Hayes did manage to get two, spot, two frags from that spot, um, although miraculous. And, I, and uh, I, don't, I don't know if it's a sustainable one. Now the oh. B site is open. Yeah, oh. that was uh, the generator player brought down by Dassey Tarek, though. He's on, his, on, on the quick rotate if he wants to go through the vents, but he's still worried. Team Elevate got that pick. 
opens up B, but didn't even act on it. Peter is clearing the area right now. It's going to try to lock down B by himself and force Elevate to go over towards A while they might cause some suspicion that it's going to be a B play. So I think our one and two men are going to try to make some noise here, take control of things. And But meanwhile, Peter is going to be over here by himself just holding it down. Oh, yeah, okay. So Roka goes for his door play over at A, which he is definitely known for on this map, at least in my mind. I feel like it's all I see him do. And it failed pretty miserably. So now they'll flip it around right back to B. Peter's going to be able to peek out in the fire, get one off shot, will miss the next. And it's actually a TK. Hayes, though, makes up for it, gets two headshots. And now Desi by himself. Oh. Hayes picks up the op for Peter. And there you go. He'll win the round for his fallen comrade. And uh, Hayes, four kills and uh, a TK. So Tell me, man. Give me your energy. That's what that's, he did. He that's just sort uh, of an ace. Yeah, it's a mini ace he for sure. Killed five people. No, didn't he? He, he kill killed his teammate. Oh, okay. And Does, four. Doesn't that count on the kill? Oh, I don't know if it I actually it was counts three. on the right. Yeah, I thought it was three and then the TK. Oh, okay, maybe. F it. Let's give him the four. Or let's give him the ace. <laughs> sort of. <laughs> uh, Official ruling. Yeah, there it is. 15 to 10 now. CLG, they finally did it. They got to the point where at least, you know, even if this goes rough, they'll be going to overtime and have another shot. Uh, elevate, though, still in it to tie it. And then we'll see if they're in it to win it. If it does go to overtime, but... Mm -hmm. at, the, at the rate that it is going, right? Like if... Oh, and there's it. Roka for the first time. Maybe not the first time, but finally getting that kill out of the door. Still two players in A. Actually, really three, because they've got one over on the highway. Uh, it is just one at, at B holding on. Mm -hmm. That's finesse. At the rate they are going, you know, if CLG don't win this, it's going to be tough, and Tarek does take down Roka for free. Oh, I'm worried that these catwalk players might be too much for Elevate to handle. There's so many bodies in this A site now. Skadoodle, though, with the op, brings down Tarek. Peter with his. Takes down Rush. It's a three on two. Elevate with the man advantage. Oh, Desi gets a molly kill, and now it's just Finesse by himself. I think he just got legged there as well. Trying to toss in the nade. And Skadoodle will op him down. So Elevate now getting out to 11. The gap is back to four rounds. Yeah, and uh, I was just going to point out in the middle of that action that uh, at the rate that they're going, right, we have three rounds, but they're all so far spaced apart that it's caused CLD to be on so many saves. And although they haven't had that many opportunities to win rounds, since they're only able to win rounds scarcely, um, Elevate, you know, in theory, are on track to almost tie this before uh, CLG would theoretically win a round based on the rate that they're doing it, right? So um, with that in mind, Elevate are still looking really strong on T side and uh, are only four away from bringing this to OT. That would be an enormous victory for them, the last thing that CLG would want. Yeah, two players at the door. Actually, really three there. They know every round Roka's there, right? So they'll put three bodies at that door, open it with their pistols, and they find that kill. That's going to give Tarek, who is dangerous, an AK. He's got no armor. But we'll see what he can do with it. Finesse at the generator, almost able to get one himself, dealing with some fire as well. Skadoodle gets him with the Tech-9. And Cutler not able to hold on to the angle. That is CT. Peter on the flank also doesn't work out. Hayes, though, finally getting on that scoreboard. Skadoodle with a nice hop onto Hayes. Who's going to see him first? Oh. Yeah. Eric's in a good spot. He will see Skadoodle first. And he'll back off. And this is going to be round 12 here. Time's getting way too low. Tarek's just going to go back and save this. Yep. And that way they find uh, the situation like they did a couple rounds ago. AK has been saved. And I didn't actually even check the money. But yeah, it's a situation where that will allow them to get another op up more than likely. Mm -hmm. And have full rifles. Man, man, a CLG have not got to be feeling good about the fact that, and I'm going to quote myself and say if they lose this map after having uh, 12 rounds on T side, that they're just going to feel, you know, I mean, there's no way to justify that. That's a huge, that's a huge failure on both sides, right? But for Elevate to do it in the second half um, when all odds are against them, it's, it's even crazier. So um, you, you can't say that it's, it's that hard to win a round on CT side because it really isn't. It's just yeah. a matter of, of not playing the CT side well, and they're not doing it. So... Um, even though that is the case, have already met their quota or elevates quota in CT rounds. And, uh, but the thing is they've done it on the back of a pistol, so not even harder in victories, or at least not all of them. Yeah, and uh, we see Elevate doing a very similar thing that CLG was doing on that T side there, taking it slow. Or it's this time they're going to switch it up. They're going to put the op there. And he opens <laughs> to go backwards with the pop flash. Doodles oh there with the God. no scope, however. Hiko finds that fence player. And instead of trying to throw that molly, which a lot of times you oh. just get killed with a molly in hand, Hiko is like, you know what? 
I'll just have some nice AK spray and brings it down. Peter, though, with that nice headshot. This time having some luck at that, uh, that forklift with the pistol. Didn't get any the, the one time he was there previously. If he fights anyone, it'll be Roka who's moving up, and it did look like Hiko and friends were coming up behind him. No, they're actually moving out over towards B, mm -hmm. which is the right call. Closest player is Sandbags at middle right now, and I think we got, uh, who is that, Tarek on the long rotate, as, as Roka will shut down A. Those rotations sort of stopped by the CTs, uh, but I, th I think they're quite aware it's B. Yeah, Tarek actually does have armor, and he's the lone man in the site. Oh, what a beautiful a nice first shot. shot there onto Desi. No one's got into the site yet. Tarek, though, now going to be smoked off, and Finesse trying to pinch on the other side, and he does with the CZ. He gets the kill. Now they've got both AKs. Oh, Tarek! Oh. He's going to fall. It's going to put it to a one-on-one. -on -one. Tarek with the 2K. He's very, very low. Rush low as well, down to 46 and 35. Rush gets that bomb down, oh, and Tarek what a does round. it. The clutch to send him onto map two and CLG. Oh, my God. They were looking a little rough CT side, but they finally got enough rounds. And that's map one winner, CLG. My god, that was an unbelievable round from Tarek. That was so well played. Like, fully aware of the flank and Roka, knowing that he came out of A main. Almost no chance that he would come down highway and instead watch his back at truck, got that frag, and obviously locked down the site by himself. And uh, winning that 1v1 was crucial, so just uh, fantastic. Yeah, and I was impressed, like I said, the really tight gameplay CLG put on uh, the T side, but we, we heard some things saying the CT side was going to be very dynamic. Uh, Dust was talking about that uh, for a little bit, and we'll see what he has to say at the analyst desk, but we do have some stats up here, and I don't know, Launders, any, any final thoughts before we do throw it to the analyst desk? Uh, just some pretty good uh, kill distribution, kind of on both sides, I feel like. Uh, that's F and S, uh, a little bit low on kills, but in terms of... Elevate, they've got a, a, a few players with a little bit less skills. It balances out. And um, in terms of the plays, though, I mean, Tarek, uh, obviously Cutler being a rock on CT side and, and Tarek with the huge individual plays, I mean, that really made a huge difference. It's just, just so well played, though. <laughs> All right. And we'll get to them in just a yeah. second. So there you go. It's <laughs> going to be dust and misled over the analyst desk. Guys, take it away. Thank you so much there, Lawrence and Helium. As we're going to talk through that first map, of course, it ended with a bang there with that uh, three-kill clutch from Tarek to actually close out the map 16-12. But let's take it from the top, which was in that first half where we saw CLG win it 12-3 from T side, just playing really, really well. Of course, it started uh, with a pistol round victory and being able to capitalize that to a 3-0. Uh, and then from there, they just uh, really took off. Uh, what do you think there? Yeah, I, to talk about that pistol round, especially that 2K from Cutler to get that pistol round victory, that was sweet at the end there. To get that to happen right in a row, bang, bang, both those kills made it happen. That was really, really nice. And I mean, after that 3-0, it kind of got a little rough. They were able to get around. Then after that, uh, it, did, it took to what, round 10? for them to get another round. So it was a really long drought for Elevate to try and bring something together. And CLG was looking very dominant going into that until we got to that round 10. Yeah, I mean, CLG did a great job controlling Elevate's economy. Even though they lost the opening gun round for the 3-1, they come right back and this eventually forces, you know, Elevate actually on a double save in a particular yeah. instance of that half. And so definitely just controlling that economy was big. Also, I want to say this. There's been a lot of criticism, including from myself, about CLG sometimes not being on the same page, seeming indecisive. It seems like they're asking too many questions or are not talking enough, not, not really knowing exactly what they want to do. But they seem so much more decisive. They did still stick to kind of their their slow play, like the, the slow plays at mid are, you know, the hit and these slow plays back to the other side. They, they did kind of remain with that, that slower type of style, which is, you know, characteristic of them on a map like this, though they also did have some fast executes at A that we saw a couple of times. But they looked so much more decisive and on point. When you were watching some of these executions, you could just tell that they were on the same page on timing, you know, modeling in the corner of that quad box while also peeking through. Just they seem to be communicating much better on, on syncing up their peaks and, and their nades and the timings on all of that. So shout out to them. They, they look so much cleaner uh, from their T-side play here than what we've seen in the past like Akatavita. Yeah, and I mean, when they were working that on their T side, they were throwing that pick and roll in there, but they always kind of seemed to throw that fake over towards the B bomb site and elevate bit on it at least two times. Just really, really hard, fully rotated in there. I mean, given they were both eco rounds that they were going against them on, and then they threw that fake over towards B, but it was just amazing job to throw that fake off of a pick and roll and just work their way all the way into the A bomb site and successfully take it. And they did what they needed to as CTs to take that half. And we got down to the end of it. I mean, yeah, it's T's, excuse yeah. me. But 
it came down so very close once we switch halves. We thought, oh, oh this yeah. is buttoned up. Yeah, we this thought this was done. It was 12 3 scoreline. Yeah. You know, I was eating a sandwich in the break room. I'm like, I better put down my sandwich. I think we're about to have to break out the announcements <laughs> pretty quick here. But no, Elevate makes it very interesting, even though they uh, did. Uh, lose the pistol round, they won the next three rounds. Yep. They got that big eco. Of course, it, that's just the way the economy works. If you win pistol, you get eco. That's an auto double save every single time, and that's why you see kind of that three round streak there by Elevate. Uh, from there, you, you have COG fitting in around here or there, but Elevate's able to streak these rounds together. Uh, some of their players that were a little bit slow in the first half, including Hiko and Ska, who were a bit quiet in the first half, if we're honest about it, the two heavy hitters we expected a lot from, they woke up there on the T side. They were starting to get some picks. They were, they were starting to open up some bomb sites. They themselves were manipulating rotations very well. And I have to also say CLG just played kind of uncharacteristic for CT side. Typically you see them move the personnel around a lot. Get get aggressive, you know, push squeaky halls or push A main or push B lobby. There was a couple of times they got a little bit aggressive mid and got some picks like Hayes had a big two kill round from that. They had a round where uh, so, so they had a little bit of that, but it wasn't quite the same aggressive style I'm used to seeing from CLG. They seemed a bit, and I don't know if it's because once Elevate started catching up, they got a bit concerned and, and started playing a bit over standard. But let's just give a shout out to Tarek, right? Yeah. I, I called him out kind of beforehand about which Tarek is going to show up. The guy that's leading comebacks like against Hellraisers on Nuke at Katowice or, or the guy that struggles a bit to live up to the hype. And he played excellent and he, he, he put the exclamation point at the end of the game yeah. there with that three kill, but he was good the whole game through. So uh, crazy stuff there. Yeah, and I mean, even then, like we talked about Hayes before a little bit, one of those players that can step up really big, and we saw him come into that round with a big multi-kill round, even with the TK, I believe that was on Peter that he got the TK yeah. on there, playing from the Creeper, but that's exactly what they needed in that bomb site, and I mean, that got him to their 15th round. So then after that, it was just trying to creep out that last mm -hmm. final round that you needed to end that game, and sometimes that can be the hardest round for a team to get. After you get to 15, it's you kind of relax a little bit. They were catching up. I mean, they made it all the way back to what was the final score? 16-12? Yeah. I mean, they brought Being it down back 13, so three, close. Yeah. And doing that. That yeah. was almost an extremely momentous, com momentous oh, yeah, comeback definitely. from those guys. It was pretty insane, but getting to that 15th round, allowing them to get all the way back up to 12, and then finally grabbing it right there at the end. As you said with Tarek, that was exactly what they needed. Big for them. Yeah, very big. And so now we are about to go to map two. Uh, which is going to be Dust2. This is Elevate's pick, and I think this was actually probably their best chance to plot a map, but I, I really do think they needed cash. I think even yeah. if uh, we see a Dust2 win here from uh, Elevate, I think Overpass is going to be extremely difficult with the yeah. bug to be able to work. So we'll just have to see how it plays out, but we will see that in just a moment. We're going to take a quick break, but when we come back, we will have that map to Dust2 between Elevate and CLG, where CLG has that 1-0 lead in the series right now. So just stay tuned, and we'll be right back. <laughs> 